Hey, so anyone that's listening in today is listening to two women from opposite ends of the world who are literally doing much the same thing in the same space. My name's Tracy, and today I'm interviewing Philippa Butler, based in the UK. I'm going to share a little bit about how I know Philippa. So um, she is the host of Moving Through Menopause podcast, and she's also working in the fitness and wellness industry. You have Philippa, I'm talking to you now. <laughs> you have, um, you are the founder of Precision, the movement and mindfulness for maximizing midlife. You offer online classes, which I love. I looked at the timetable. It's like there's a lot of choices around what anyone would be able to join from their home, the safety of their home. Your fees are really affordable so anybody could tap into a couple of those workouts every week and feel really good about it so I just want to congratulate you Philippa for getting into the online space it is a challenge as a midlifer <laughs> and you cracked it so congratulations well thank you so much I, I'm not sure that I feel like I've cracked it but I'm definitely <laughs> I'm definitely working at it and, you know, actually, before all of this business, I was quite a technophobe in actual fact. And so I feel like I have come a very long way uh, in really harnessing this technology, which I think a lot of us are having to do. It's been imposed upon us in a lot of cases. But for me, it was very much, uh, you know, see something new and shiny and uh, and have a go at it. You know, and so that's what I did. I grasped the nettle and I've, I've run with it. And you know what? I'm having an absolute ball. So, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I can agree know, with you. I also was in fear of anything to do with technology. And if there's one thing that the pandemic has done for me personally is it's launched me into that space of, you know, having to develop online exercise programming, having to promote and market into social media like everyone else does, um, setting up a website and starting a podcast. Old dog, new tricks, right? <laughs> well, less of the old if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. I actually own it. I'm really cool with it. Very cool oh. with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you definitely, uh, that, I mean, that's the title, isn't it, of your podcast, Sexy Aging. So I, I was loving that, actually. Uh, but do tell me more about what you're getting up to. You gave a wonderful introduction of all the things that I've been trying to do. So do, do tell us more about what you're doing. Yeah, for some of the listeners to Sexy Aging, um, they would know that through the nine months that I've been interviewing that I ended up relocating back to New Zealand after 20 years in Asia, working in the fitness industry, setting up various businesses and building teams across uh, businesses such as Fitness First, Les Mills International. And then um, with my husband, we had our own boutique brand that uh, we were fortunate to sell before the pandemic. So um, that was a catalyst to also coming back to New Zealand. Um, with that, I came back with quite a few skills across sort of online fitness um, and just became really interested in the midlife woman's health and wellness space. Very similar to you, Philippa. Um, trying to wrap my head around how we should be moving our bodies in this age because everything we knew before isn't really working. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. So those, yeah. Entirely, entirely that. It, it, not only is it not working uh, for you, but sometimes it's working against you. And that injuries are the things that we start to encounter increasingly. You know, and, uh, and for me, I, I, moving through menopause is my, uh, is my podcast, as you said. And, and menopause is something that hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah, so let's talk about that. This is, this is one thing that, you know, you and I are catching up over is our coffee. In my case, it's morning, so it's coffee for me. For you, it's probably herbal tea right now. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about our menopause journey because, to be honest, mm -hmm. I've never spoken of my personal journey in a podcast episode. So let's do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's. I, I, I mean, I don't think we can talk about this stuff enough because every woman's journey seems to be different. And, uh, and that there are, although there's a lot of 
commonalities, uh, you know, the, the few things that people think of, uh, hot flushes, for instance, and not even everybody has those, but there are other things. And for me, it was a loss of sleep, sleep, interrupted sleep, you know, so that I was waking half a dozen times every night. And that went on for about five years. I'm not taking, we're not saying five minutes, it was a very <laughs> long time. And uh, you know what, I feel like I, I've been kicking myself a little bit for putting up with this for so long. And so this is part of why I am so passionate about sharing, not just sharing my story, but allowing people to share their stories because we're, you know, like I say, we're all different and it can be different for different people, but we need to know this stuff. And, and the other thing that we need to know is that there are things you can do and, uh, you know, medication is not off the agenda. And so yeah. stupidly, I say stupidly for me, you know, I think like you've been in the wellness industry for the whole of my career as a physiotherapist, and, uh, and I was actually quite medication phobic, uh, you know, avoiding medication if I possibly could and, and seeking natural alternatives. And there's really nothing wrong with that. I think that's absolutely appropriate. But there are times when it's entirely appropriate to get uh, medication. Now, for me, the not sleeping was part of it. Uh, slightly going out of my mind was the other part of it. Who knew? I mean, yeah. and we knew? literally had the same symptoms that that really that I really struggled with as well. So, yeah, if we can, like, I want to share. I had this, the exact same. So, sleep was mm. probably the first thing that kicked in, or the lack of. And I mm. kind of thought it was because we were running and operating a new business. So I I thought it was just stress or my mind overthinking. But like you, I would wake up multiple times and definitely between two and four mm -hmm. in the morning and not be able to go back to sleep which is horrendous because you know that's as we know as educators that that is the time that your mind needs to be resting that you're doing your backup and your body is in recovery mode so all the hormones that are mixed up in that pool of sleep are getting completely out of whack and really freaked out. And then it's a catch-22. So you get up in the day and you try to move through the day and now you can't remember stuff. You've got brain fog and you're starting to lose your confidence and your ability. So all those things that line up just because the lack of sleep at first, I mean, I had that, I had the same thing as you. Couldn't remember things, couldn't remember people's names that I'd met before. I was terrified to introduce a friend to some another friend, just yeah. in case I couldn't remember their name. Yeah, <laughs> you, you desperately, uh, and this is, uh, I'm really hoping this is going to come to me when I say this is... <laughs> And, you know, it, and it didn't quite often. It, uh, absolute, people you knew so well that you just couldn't retrieve that name. And, uh, and, and I mean, we know that these estrogen receptors are situated in, you know, the memory centers in particular and the sleep centers in the brain. And, and it, you know, it isn't just sleep deprivation that gets in the way of our memory and our uh, sanity, you know, on the verge, feeling on the verge of uh, who am I? What what on earth is happening to me? And and feeling quite uh, not yourself at all. In fact, who, who on earth is this person? Um, you know, and I and I put up with that for a long time. I did seek help from my medical uh, team. You know, well, I say team doctor. You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, and, and, you know, we wanted to talk about how this experience of seeking assistance can be so different depending on not, not even where you live in the world, but where you live in your local, in your country, in your local area. The chances of happening upon a doctor who has a particular interest in menopause, who, who's actually bothered to keep up to speed with the latest research. Uh, in, our, in the UK, we have the NICE guidance the National Institute for Clinical Excellence and they produce guidance and you know this is clearly available for for people and for practitioners but uh the, the ones that I went to see are definitely not read it is <laughs> <So. laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, once again, we have a very similar experience. Um, so I figured out that I could probably take HRT when I did an interview for my podcast with a doctor in the UK. So doc, Dr. Rebecca Lewis, who also works with Dr. Louise Newsom, um, she interviewed uh, on the podcast and gave me a heads up on everything about HRT and I knew nothing. Mm -hmm. So this is just last year. And once I had finished the interview, I was like, oh, okay, so I'm going to investigate that. I think I'm definitely a great candidate and I want it. Why not try? I haven't tried that, right? So managed to get my sleep under control. Most times I was getting a pretty good sleep, but there was still the odd night that I was awake, you know. And so, um, and then I hit, hit the trouble of trying to find a good doctor who knew what I was talking about. Because once you go down that menopause rabbit hole and find out everything you need to know as a consumer, <laughs> when you try to find a doctor who knows as much as you do, probably, hopefully more, mm -hmm. it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, an absolute nightmare. Uh, and so many women that I, I work with have these varied. I had one the other day who came in. Oh, yes, uh, I've got osteoporosis. She's, you know, only in her uh, late 50s. Uh, the doctor put, put me on estrogen patches. And I said, uh, what about the progesterone? Uh, I said, have you got a womb? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, last yeah. time I looked, I had a womb. Uh, I said, well, my understanding is we need estrogen and progesterone if we have a womb. And she wasn't on it. You know, <gasps> I know. I So I advised her to go back to the doctor to get this uh, essential piece of the, you know, they were, they were trying to be helpful, obviously. But, uh, you know, it's really, that's not good. And she's not the first person that I've heard that story from. So, so you know, knowing what, what relying on doctors to know what we need can sometimes uh, just, we fall foul of the fact that they actually don't necessarily know as much as we might if we did a, a lot of research for ourselves. So I think that's the thing that I take away really is that, to, you know, as much as we can to be empowered to seek information and knowledge and then go armed with that information. I, I never I tell anybody to go who goes who decides to go to the doctor uh, for HRT to take this guidance in their hand with them, you know, and wave it at the doctor so that so that we at least the doctor knows as much as them <laughs> yeah and philippa there's some really good tools now as well aren't there and you know what the interesting thing is a lot of them are coming out of the uk and that's why i definitely wanted to reach out and speak to someone recently like as of today speak to you because i've seen information and education really ramping up and i don't know whether it's because i'm in the space that i see everything now or whether there is that infiltration into the general public, that there is a lot more knowledge now about menopause and access to tools. But I actually tapped into the Balance app, which is mm. developed by Dr. Louise Newsom and a team. Um, and I thought it was fantastic. So you're just tracking all these crazy things that are happening to you. You just start tracking them. Over the course of uh, four to six weeks, you will get a report through the app that you can take to your GP. And this will outline to the GP, out of the 34 symptoms, I've got 27. What are we going to do about this? <laughs> right? Yeah, right. I mean, that's it. That is a fantastic resource. Uh, actually, I am familiar with that. Uh, I must say, I'm, I haven't investigated it as thoroughly as I might, because I it sort of came after I had already, uh, you know, taken that journey myself. But you're absolutely right. This is an amazing resource that Dr. Louise Newson is doing some groundbreaking work. And, uh, you know, out of the goodness of her heart, she she's she's really this is a life's work, I think, seeing women that have struggled and unnecessarily. This is the thing, you know, that I said, I sometimes kick myself for being that generation of women who thought the breast cancer uh, story was true. You know, mm. I was absolutely that generation of women who heard 
that uh, that that's, HRT gave you breast cancer and left it at that and thought it was really not to be approached. So, and I was totally, totally misinformed um, in, in thinking that because we've subsequently, the work that's being done disproves that uh, pretty much completely. So, uh, you know, so I, for a long time, you know, like you're saying 34 symptoms, I read the other day, there was something like 46. Yeah, probably. I I think that list could be endless pretty much when we think about the um, systemic effects of estrogen, you know, it doesn't just affect bikini line area, does it? It, It's the whole body. It's the whole body, Um, yeah. Uh, oh my gosh so so yeah definitely tap into that that resource is a fantastic one and I know um I've seen it sort of come from being a free app and there's still a free element isn't there yeah and then the, there's a paid element as well yeah but uh, but yeah that she deserves lots of, of praise and kudos because she's done amazing work um, you know, and for women not to have to go through this is really why I keep talking about it. And, and what you said about, is it just because we're in this space? And the answer to that is it's hard to know. Hmm. Um, I, I know it's getting coverage on the media because people tell me, you know, oh, I saw it on the news about menopause. Or, oh, I heard, read about it on in the whatever magazine on in the newspapers. So it is getting a lot of coverage. It's kind of topical at the moment, but I I definitely don't want that to be a a fad, if you like. I I don't want it to be something that goes away because we're not there yet by any means. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm also starting to see that happen here in New Zealand. There's a lot more um, publications and media about woman quite well-known woman here uh you know usually celebrities or tv personalities that have come out openly and shared their story with perimenopause and how it's affected them at work um there's also some really good strong women here that um have come together um to create a community um and th- that's when i say yeah it's probably because i'm in this space now but you know i'm com- uh, i'm connected to women across um the workforce um, and health and wellness and um, media and we're all kind of speaking and trying to help others in our own way but we're also really well connected which is incredible but mm. so while we're talking about it and we seem to know a lot about it we're still struggling with the with the general health and uh, education for the everyday woman out there Like I can still see there's still so much work to be done. And it's really because when you look around your environment, there is nothing that speaks to the menopausal woman. You have to still dive or fish for that information as an individual. Um, So my personal experience of going to a GP to request HRT, I felt like I was the first person she'd ever come across to ask. That's how she made me feel like, oh, When I said, so I'm here because I want to trial HRT, I've done my study, I've learned a lot about it, I have 27 symptoms, here's the list, Um, and so I'd like to look into it now, can you help me and can you prescribe that for me? And she was literally shocked that I was asking, because then she started to talk about, so have you tried this and have you tried that, you know, all the natural herbal things, I'm like, "Uh, yeah, of course I have, (laughs) still not working. My bones are hurting and I'm only 50. Um, I can't sleep and I can't remember how I got here. So let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know we... So it is, a, it is a, a kind of a difficult topic for somebody like me who, you know, always traditionally would opt out of medication. So... But then I started to think about it like a deficiency rather than, yeah, so, you know, you're not, you're not, uh, you're just replacing something that should be there. And previously, when we didn't live as long, it didn't matter as much, mm. you know, but now, but now it matters. And, and actually, the fact that we replace or it doesn't completely restore the levels, does it? We're not, we're not restored to our former glory that we might have been in our 20s or whatever it's not like that but it just so it's like takes the edge off the harm that that having not enough estrogen does and that's the thing for me you know it's the symptoms yes 
they were crippling. There's no doubt about that. However, the long term effects is what mm. I'm really concerned with. So that, you know, the effects on the heart, the brain, the risk, increased risk of stroke, heart attack, uh, osteoporosis is horrible and horrendous. And really nobody wants that. Um, and, and, you know, if you fracture a hip, have a hip operation, you increase your risk of actually just dying. And I, and I, I hate to keep saying this stuff, but it, it is unfortunately true. Now, you might be quite elderly when that happens. But, you know, did you think when you were 20 that 50 odd was quite old? Yeah, yes. When you were 20, it was quite old. Now we've got there. Does it feel yeah. old? Like, no. No. <laughs> We just know a lot more. We don't want to go back to 20, but we actually do want to feel 20. I want to feel vibrant and energetic, but I don't want, I, I love what I've learned to get to this stage of life, right? Hey, Philippa, I actually do want to kind of say something a little, like I'm trying to keep the balance between the HRT conversation. We're obviously both on HRT. Um, yeah. And obviously reaping the benefits of it and also agree wholeheartedly that the future benefits to our health are there. So the science is there. We are obviously still following Dr. Lisa Moscone's recent studies on um, brain health um, is for me like I don't want to forget people's names anymore. It's so heartbreaking that I would do that. So, you know, like following the, the brain health um, implications of continued HRT. But as, as fitness and health professionals, I think we both stand on that foundation of looking after your health with adequate sleep, low stress, moving every day, good nutrition, joy, community. So I still believe that these are foundations to longevity and mm. HRT is the icing on the cake. Do, yeah. Would you agree with that? No, absolutely. That is completely how I feel. That lifestyle is is what um, is what seals the deal. You know, it, it really is the thing that m makes the difference. So uh, all those things that you spoke of, uh, I do, and I will continue to do. And and the great thing is, HR teams mean, means I'll be able to keep doing them. <laughs> you know. So uh, and then and there is no one. Fix. And HRT is definitely not a golden, uh, the golden bullet, you know, that cure all. It, there isn't, there isn't one. Uh, if there was one, I would say it was exercise. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, I agree. It's like, what would we do without it? And that's, I mean, that's a huge part of why I'm on HRT is because I couldn't stand the joint pain and the hip pain and the knee pain at 50. Like, what? <laughs> Oh, madness total and yeah. I, you know what I've got the worst doms ever yes when I was perimenopausal I was like what is all this doms I keep getting I, I I used to be able to do this without doms I don't so sore muscles after exercise was I mean I did it some you know sometimes you're like oh I really feel that you know and I like that but yeah oh, that was bad <laughs> Yeah, that's disheartening as well, isn't it? So, I mean, I've noticed, yeah, I've definitely noticed that I don't have that same recovery issue that I used to have. Um, I went through a couple of years where I just, and this is before I really understood perimenopause, I definitely wasn't on HRT. I was doing my best to manage my health, as you do when you understand the foundations. But yeah, the, 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 the pain, the muscle pain, I started to find myself backing out of things that I would have put my hand up for, you know, like, yeah, I'll go to that, that, you know, that dance workout. Yes, I'll try that new hit class. I was like, oh, no, if it's on a Tuesday, I can't do it on a Tuesday because that's when I need to recover. Right. Mm -hmm. I started, started to really kind of minimize the the effects because I was afraid to feel like that. And now it, I don't really have those issues so much. I mean, I think I'm a lot more mindful of what I do on a daily basis, like I do alternate workouts, especially if they're heavy workouts. I don't do them every day like I used to. But um, yeah, at least when someone goes, hey, let's go and do this class down the road. And I don't go, oh, what's Tuesday? I can't. I go, okay. And then I'll change something later in the week, you know, if I feel that it was too much. Hmm. I mean, I think I think that's right. Balance is more important than ever before. 
at this stage of life that we are doing uh we're doing our resistance work we're doing the you know cardiovascular work we're doing this oh, <laughs> we're doing the stretching uh you know and i i love i teach yoga and pilates and i love i love both of those things is that working yeah <laughs> we can still hear you you're still fabulous <laughs> so so i i love you know and i love variety anyway this is you know this is what i always say about pilates it's your insurance policy it's the thing that keeps you doing all the other things that you want to do uh, similarly with yoga so uh and i i love variety getting on the bike spinning this morning and uh doing yoga tomorrow uh, and Pilates on Friday. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I love that. So uh, if you're not fortunate to be doing this for a job <laughs> and having, getting lots of different, you know, try as much as you can in over the course of a week to fit in uh, different kinds of modes of exercise, whether it's a swim or a hike, a gardening, you know, and then a bit of lifting heavy weights. And actually I saw something really good online the other day gardening somebody put in uh, pictures of lots of different garden tools and the muscles that they work and I thought oh that's awesome isn't it how clever yeah. is that so you know your, your muscles don't know if you're squatting down to to do the gardening or if you're squatting down to to uh, lift a barbell you know it, moving is the main thing keep moving yeah. yeah no I love that okay so now that we are talking about what we like to, how we like to work out um, I think we actually have similarities there as well so tell me about your typical workout week what does that look like we're in fitness so let's share this is like a topic for us <laughs> topic so are we talking about what I do for myself yeah no Monday through to Sunday like how does it work for you what's your schedule looking like uh, well Monday I, I like to do circuit circuit type training so I've got a circuit session on a Monday uh, and then Tuesday. Is it, is it heavy? Is it light? Is it in between? Like what, is, yeah, what are we looking at when you say circuit? It's a bit of both actually. It's a, a, a bit, bit of barbell and then a bit of uh, jumping around with a step. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tuesday, let me think. Is that today? Oh no, that was yesterday. Tuesday is, uh, is my day off. So uh, I love to take long walks. So uh, 12 and a half thousand steps. Uh, Beautiful. You know, yeah, I love yep. to do that. Uh, today I was teaching Pilates, two Pilates classes. And in between times, again, I try and fit in 10,000 steps if I can. And then tomorrow I'm teaching yoga twice uh, and Pilates once. So, you know, on days when I teach three hour, two or three hours, I, I tend not to do anything for myself. Uh, Friday, I've got yoga again, and well, both Pilates. I just love it. <laughs> Sunday, I do. Sunday, I do my uh, Les Mills body pump because yeah, like awesome. <laughs> oh, a spinning Wednesday. That I knew I did something today. Yeah, spinning. So, spinning, hiking. Uh, I swim when I feel like it. Actually, I'm going to do outdoor swimming this summer. That's on my list. All right, new thing for you. Yeah. Did I say outdoor? Of course, it's in the water, open water. <laughs> <laughs> open water swimming, actually really popular with midlife woman. Yeah, it's a thing, yeah. you know, it's a trend for us. <laughs> yeah. oh, and I'm with, going to jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah, with benefits, right? Yeah, okay, we have, we're have kind of similar. So I do uh, a circuit heavy weight training session twice a week. I need the recovery in between. I teach three spin classes of which I would call at the high end of cardiovascular training. I track my heart rate so I know it's not quite hit, but I'm getting that cardiovascular benefit. Um, and I do yoga nearly every day, minimum 30 minutes, because I value mobility. The thing that's really missing mm -hmm. is the core for me. Ooh, cool. Yeah, core and a little bit of stability training. So I've been really thinking about how to f have a focus on just some like a core stability type workout. Like I'm actually thinking it up myself. Like what can uh -huh. I do that would help me and also probably help a lot of women? Because obviously we know that, um, you know, with the estrogen and progesterone and everything kind of exiting the building, 
that um, there are things that happen to your body to challenge your core, that challenges your stability, your mobility. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really starting to think about that. And like, while I don't have that in my workout schedule right now, it's been something that's just been playing over and over in my mind. Actually, when I say it to someone, I'm probably going to get on it next week. <laughs> now you've said it, that's it. You're going to do it. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I, I absolutely love Pilates for the Pilates repertoire for this. And I, I've got a Pilates reformer. I don't know if you've heard of those. Yes. You my husband sells them, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? Okay. Uh, the well, Merithew Merith brand. Oh, is it the Merithew? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're good. Um, so, I, yeah, I did some training with them. They um, Anyway, so I, I absolutely love that. Do you not have one in your house now since you sell them? No, I, we don't because um, he's he's recently started working with um, the company that, that actually distributes them. So we don't have it. We actually don't have the space here. And, like, he's done heaps of it lately, and I've done, like, none. <laughs> so, yeah, it is it – is, yeah, I understand. I've done a few Pilates classes and I've done some reformer as well, but I haven't really got into it, you know, like not as like, not like you where it's your career. It's a, a big part of what you do. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, I love it for the core. I don't think there's anything better. And, that, no. and the, thing, the thing that it then does, I take it wherever I go and I say this to people, you know, you take it with you wherever you go, the principles, the foundations. And actually, you know, the yoga is, is equally it can be a core uh, stability challenge, can't it? So it's yes. just a question of it's not so much, uh, it's not even always what you do, uh, more about how you do it uh, that makes it more of more core, if you like. And uh, and definitely, I was talking the other day about the pelvic floor challenges that present themselves around uh, increase or worsen around this time of life. Uh, uh, and that speaks very much to this core cylinder, the whole, you know, the pelvic floor is the floor of the core cylinder, the diaphragm is the roof, and then we've got the walls, obviously. So we want to tend to all of those structures um, for this uh, optimal state stability situation around uh, around the center of the body. And then everything else is just so much easier when we have that. Uh, in the background uh, all the time you know that's what I say to people so yeah well I'd love to very happy to help if there's anything you I'm sure you don't need help but if you did uh, I'm very happy to provide inspiration for your uh, core stability uh, challenges I think I think it's the nuances that get lost when when we're so you know and I I'm somebody who likes to throw myself about uh, doing exercise but uh, the subtleties of Pilates can get lost when we take them into a gym context so that you are not necessarily getting the best out of the moves. If they're very similar to all the other stuff you do, then maybe it's not quite, uh, you know, challenging uh, in that in that different way. Keep it. Um, although you can incorporate the principles, it is it is a different way of working, yeah. you know, it's, and you'll know this if you've yep. done it. And anyway, I'm going on because I love it so much. Oh, it's good. Uh, it's so good to hear. So one of the segues I'm going to take now, so that still relates to the fact that we work in the fitness industry. Uh, is, here's my question. Midlife women mm. seem to kind of bust through or have a moment where they just go, you know what, I'm leaving that behind that doesn't serve me anymore and I'm going in this direction and this is what I'm going to do from now on and I'm just watching it happen all around me and I think it's amazing. Why do you think this happens to us? <laughs> well, do you know, I, I, I read something or heard something in a podcast the other day about, and, and I related to it and I, I don't know if it's obviously it's not for everyone, but that the hormonal shift actually changes the way we feel in, in, in that. Uh, for me, definitely, I was heavily involved in child my ch child rearing years. And it is a bit like uh, blinkers that you're provided with to stop you from seeking out anything other than this purpose, which is to nurture the, the family, you know. 
and that with the loss of estrogen, we're kind of the blinkers suddenly <laughs> they're off. No, but seriously, this is what they were saying, and I and I really related to that. Like I feel I feel a massive shift towards this is me now. I want to be like I was. I was somebody. Then I was M- Mrs. Mother. And now I'm I'm this other somebody again, you know. And I've, I've got this new chance to uh, to reinvent myself. Should I care to uh, explore new opportunities? Just do 180 degrees a- away from what you were doing before, and and I think that's very liberating. Uh, it, uh, you know, as you say, lots of lots of people have that experience. Not everybody is. Uh, in a position to be able to, to, you know, take that and run with it. Maybe they've got caring responsibilities. You know, we're in that sandwich hour generation of women with perhaps, uh, you know, you, you had your children a bit later maybe and, and they're still hanging around and then you've got elderly parents and whatever. So not everybody's in that privileged position, but, you know, it doesn't have to be a whole life change, does it? It could be as simple as taking up open water swimming. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it could. Hey, I absolutely love that analogy that you've given about, you know, the estrogen and the blinders are off, because some of that is quite funny as well. There are parts of it that you see things differently and you laugh a lot more about things that you would have taken so seriously before. You also don't take yourself as seriously. Um, And you and one of the other aspects, does estrogen make you stop having a filter? Because... (laughs) often women start to say things that they really think like they're not going to accept any bs anymore and so they just put it out there and uh, i think that's quite funny it's yeah it is funny and i mean we we need to laugh at ourselves and and situations we find ourselves in don't we uh it's so healthy to to laugh and smile and and be full of joy and and community as you said you know get together and share these stories of absolute and abject you know hilarity let's laugh at ourselves uh be liberated and uh really just just grow always always grow and uh do new things with different people I, I set myself a goal every year of doing something different something new I've never tried before and and I, you know as I get older I might have to do two a year just to to you know ramp it up a bit <laughs> I love that hey isn't it also really interesting that we are two women from opposite ends of the world more than happy to just sit down and have an open-hearted conversation we've never met and this is another amazing part of this time of our lives is that we are willing to share we are willing to share our stories and communicate so that we can help other people obviously you know this is a podcast that's going to go out there people are going to listen to it so therefore we've done the thing that we wanted to do which was to help and to share and educate but I just sort of was having this moment where I'm like, well, I don't even know this woman. And now I feel like I could just go around to her house, bring over, you know, a couple of coffees, sit down and talk a little bit more about it. Right. <laughs> absolutely. I've loved, I've absolutely loved this part of, uh, of podcasting, meeting people. All I've ever done is work with people. And, uh, and as a therapist, I've, in, you know, I interview everybody that comes into my life, you know, they walk into, I have a clipboard, you know, I write down the name, I take all the details. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and so I just, I, I feel very natural. Like you said, it feels so very natural to talk to somebody and the technology allowing us to, to chat with people on the other side of the world. It's mind boggling and brilliant all at the same time. Yeah. Hey, Philippa, it's just, just been really really awesome I probably got to get back to work now so (laughs) and you've probably got to teach an online class at some point I'm sure um thank you so much for catching up with me great to catch up thank you it's been great we'll do it again yeah let's do it again